Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside and we are going to have an update on the production greenhouse behind me. Uh, you will see that it has got a lot of shape to it since we were last here. Roger and the boys, as I Roger and the guys, as I say, uh, have been making great work this week. Um, and so we just want to kind of come up here, give you an update, tell you about what is happening because if you love Creekside plants and you love the plants that come from this nursery, well, guess what? In that, we've got to have spaces to grow them. So that is what this new greenhouse is uh, going to be for. This greenhouse, um, like all of our greenhouses that we get are from Atlas, um, Atlas Greenhouses in Georgia. Fantastic company if you are looking uh, to add a greenhouse to your property, whether you are a home gardener and you're looking for something small to fit on your residential lot or if you are in production like we are um, they come in all shapes and sizes this is the super arch from atlas greenhouses and basically what it is this is what we call a gutter connected greenhouse so what does it mean when it says gutter connected a gutter connected greenhouse is where you have um, individual greenhouses that are literally connected by gutters, like a rain gutter that you will have on your house. So the great thing about gutter connected greenhouses is, is that you can continue to add to them um, as the years go on. And so Jerry is showing you that gutter. It is a rain collection gutter because the rain will come off of the top of these arches there is a slight slope. I think Roger said it's like a six inch drop from the front to the back so that generally speaking, the water will flow towards the back out of these gutter connected greenhouses. The vast majority of large production greenhouses are gutter connected because like I said, it's easy to come back in subsequent years and add on as you go down. Um, so this whole overall structure is a 90 by 96. It is 96 feet deep. And because we have three bays, three greenhouses, they are each 30 feet wide each. So 30 times three is 90. So this structure is 90 feet uh, wide, 96 feet deep. And you can see that it is quite large. What are we going to be using this greenhouse for? It is production. Uh, we've had some people come by and they're like, hey, we want to see the new greenhouse. This is how you get to see the new greenhouse is through these videos because this is up here at production. So that is kind of closed to our retail customers. That is why we bring you these videos so you can see what is happening. Again, why in the world do we need to be building more greenhouses? And why do you care as a home gardener what the business side of Creekside is? Well, because come this spring, we will be selling uh, our perennials, annuals, and of course, continue with the shrubs online. So we are going to be shipping our plants all across the country. And in order to do that, obviously we have to increase production. We have to grow more plants because we are a grower retailer, meaning we grow the plants that we sell. Um, so that is what this space is for. It is for our online sales. Obviously some of the retail garden center will come out of here. And then also the gardens here at Creekside Nursery. As we continue to develop our gardens, we need to grow more plants for that. So that is what, um, while we talk about kind of the production side and what we are doing here. Now, let's talk about the mechanics um, of the greenhouse and what it is that you are seeing. Because I know some people really find this quite fascinating of how you put a greenhouse together. Um, this is a little bit very similar as far as the roof line to the two production greenhouses that you see behind us, right? Um, so on the top of these houses, we will have the poly plastic on top of this. So where we have at retail, it is like the hard carbonate clear plastic for lack of a better word, these tops will have the poly plastic on that. So every several years, you just have to replace that um, because they start to get milky and the UV light can't get through. So that's just kind of a maintenance on a greenhouse. Now, on the side, so 
basically all four sides of the greenhouse, both the length and the front and the back, will have roll up and down curtains. We have that on both of the production houses and the retail garden center, and it is fantastic because um, those roll up sides are controlled by a thermostat. So Jerry will set the thermostat for what he wants. Um, it's great in the early spring because our temperatures fluctuate so much. At night, it's quite cool, so those curtains will lower. If the heaters need to kick on, they can absolutely kick on. Then when the sun comes out during the day, it's quite toasty in here, gets a little too warm, so then the sides will roll up. And they will lower and raise throughout the day different uh, degrees and different heights so that it can keep the greenhouse at a constant temperature, which is what you want when you are growing in a greenhouse. You don't want to stunt your plants and you don't want the plants to start to stretch and get too leggy because it got too hot. So that's going to happen on all four sides. All right, currently up here, this greenhouse, uh, they start here and they kind of work their way down, assembly line method. And so you can see they have all of the bows. The bows are the top, right? Kind of that loose arch. So those are the bows. Between the poles right here, so from pole to pole is 12 feet apart. There are four bows in each section, so 12 divided by 4 is 3. So th every 3 feet there is a bow. They do that and this super arch is designed that way for strength and structure. That is why we went with the super arch, so that it has really nice, strong integrity. Because especially in coming out of winter into spring, we can get some massive winds coming from this direction and we need that strength and sturdiness of the structure. Um, not that we're gonna have hanging baskets in here, we just need to have nice tight. So you've got the bows, and then from that, you've got purlins and you've got um, then just your cross beams here. All of that is tying in the greenhouse so that you don't get any wiggle room back and forth and everybody is nice and tight and secure in here. You will also notice like um, the, what do we call these things, got, uh, Jerry? Not the purlins, the... Um, the ridge pole or five. No, not the ridge pole. These little... At the, at the diagonals. I don't know, they're cross beams, whatever they are. Support. Just support, okay. So <laughs> if you'll notice those support pieces, they're going in different directions and they're on different sides of the poles. So they're not only on just one side, they crisscross back and forth. Again, all of that gives nice and structure and then running down the sides, both the sides and then down the middle, these ones that are running uh, the length way, <laughs> practicing my airplane uh, moves here, those are purlins. And purlins, of course, they help tie in all of the bows and keep them all nice and strong and secure. It is just a massive system of kind of like checks and balances to make sure that the greenhouse doesn't move from side to side or front to back. So coming on down here, um, I haven't had a chance to talk to Roger yet. So you will notice though that we have these cables and there are cables hanging um, every so often, especially here um, in the front, on the front and the back. There's two sets right here. So obviously they're going to take these and then tie them in somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where, um, but yeah, this is just another system of trying to make sure that the greenhouse is nice and strong and secure because dear heavens, in North Carolina, obviously, we're not having to worry about a snow load, right? If we get a snow, um, it, it would be very small, but this greenhouse can be used all across the country. So when you have areas, maybe I'm looking at like you, Michigan, um, Maine, other, different places, right? Um, that, ha that does have a heavy snow load, then this is what you need to maintain uh, that good, strong structure in the greenhouse and keep the integrity of the greenhouse going. Yeah, I think it tie back to that. Oh, I think you're right, Jerry. See, this is why Jerry's the one doing this. So on the side, of, if you can see, See these two brackets that have kind of the big holes in them? So Jerry said they probably go in there and then tie back. Yeah. So again, it's just 
tightens up the whole thing and holds everybody in. So we'll keep you updated on that on the next video. Um, but the thing about with the Atlas greenhouses from Atlas is that they are very, um, they're wonderful to work with. Jerry will call up Heath and he's like, okay, this is our latest project. This is what we need. This is what the purpose of this greenhouse is going to be. And then he and Heath will talk through the whole process and figure out what is the best house for our needs because we really do have now three very distinct different structures from Atlas based on what we need. So we have this one for production. Everything will be grown on the ground. People will always ask us that is, why do you not put tables in here? It really is not the most efficient way to grow in a greenhouse with tables um, because if you watch any of our other visits to like major greenhouses, Spring Meadow, uh, Pleasant View, Four Star, those houses all um, grow on the ground because we have the trays, right? So most of the things that are going to be in here are annuals and perennials and they're going to be in a 10 count tray. So we will line everything where you see gravel is going to be solid plants. We'll have little little paths basically that like a maybe a 12 to 18 inches where we could just slide down if we need to. But if we had tables in here, there's no way that we could reach everything, um, especially on the other sides. And so putting it on the ground, you're just, you're maximizing your space for that. So like these really expensive, fancy tables that can almost equal out the whole thing where they move back and forth. Right. And open up a small aisle. Like yeah. That. It's not that you couldn't put this in here eventually. Yeah but that it is extra cost that I just don't think is necessary. Well, and it's not, when we say extra cost, it's not just, you know, a couple hundred dollars. I would say multiple, multiple, tens of tens of thousands of dollars. And so um, that for us right now, that's just an unnecessary expense to have to go through that. And we just don't need that. So that's why we don't grow on tables. To, um, it is the cost. Yeah, it'll help us later on too, because we'll cool, we'll, it'll be cooler. Mm -hmm in the summer right because heat rises so when you have them on the ground like Jerry is saying the ground is cooler um, now that can kind of work against you in the winter time like because we will start getting plants the middle of January so that's our first arrival we call it week three so the third week of 2024 we will have the first round of annuals coming in Obviously, I think you know, the same for most part of the country, right? So mid-January to mid-February is our coldest time. And so um, it does, the coolness slightly works against you, but it also can work for you because like if you do super bells and super tunias, growing them on the ground and they're nice and cool, they stay nice and tight and compact. They don't go leggy, which is the last thing that we want as a grower to go leggy. Um, but we were talking about the three distinct different uh, structures that we have here at Creekside based on what we need. Um, over here, um, you can, let's just go up here for a second. I want to show you something. We're going to take a little field trip. So these two production houses are the exact same. Um, the only difference between these two houses is that the house on the right the sides are controlled by thermostat. The house on the left, it is manual. So we have to actually come up here and physically roll them up. I think the plan was to convert that to temperature, <laughs> hopefully. Um, but in here, this is a, the snow arch. Yes. Right. This is the snow arch. And again, now you're like, well, Jenny, why in the world? You just said you're in North Carolina. You probably get any snow. Why in the world would you have a snow arch greenhouse in the Piedmont of North Carolina? Again, when Jerry was talking to Heath and they were talking it through and our needs, notice all of these white drippers. These are irrigation drippers. For every dripper, a hanging basket goes on here. So I think this one greenhouse will hold 150, 200. It's something around there. It's a, it's a, it's a good number of hanging baskets. Let's, let's say that. So imagine, let's just say it's 100. 100 hanging baskets, big plants full of water. That's going to be quite heavy. So all of that weight is pulling down on the roof of the greenhouse. Hence, while we got the snow arch is because no, we don't have snow on top, but these hanging baskets are essentially that same kind of weight as a heavy snow load. So that is why we went with the snow arch here. 
And again, that's just talking to Heath as we walk through and talk through our needs. And then of course at the retail greenhouse, that is more, yes, we use that for production, but we also need it to have it be a really nice, comfortable retail space, um, a little bit of a cleaner, classier look down at the garden center for our customers to come in. And now because it has those nice, big, tall ceilings in it and it has the sides that roll up, um, even though these are pretty much full I don't think they can go up any further, can they? Um, they may be able to go up just a little bit further, but obviously you're not gonna walk through this. Now, yes, you can go underneath it and go out, um, but both at the garden center and then this structure, the size will roll up, what, 10 feet? I, I mean, it's gonna be, be a good ways. So we can, people can walk through it easily. We can get machines in and out quite, quite easily and use that uh, space for all sorts of great things. People have asked about the, um, since we're building this new production greenhouse and that eventually the potting machine will end up in um, the, the first greenhouse that has that full concrete pad. And they're like, well, what are you gonna use the annex for? So the annex, of course, is that building that we built behind these greenhouses. That sole purpose was always for shipping. So that is where our online sales, the fulfillment, fulfillment center of the online sales takes place. All the shipping, the packaging, all the computers are back there. Everything that we need, the office is back there for all of that. So that was the original intent for that space. We just used it in the meantime for the potting machine and it will stay in there for a little bit, right, Jerry? Until we fill up these two houses first. Yeah, the potting machine has wheels. It does. Do we go look at it right quick? So yes. Let's go over there. Yes. Um, Let's walk and talk. So the potting machine does have wheels. We got that from um, Ellis um, down in, uh, uh, Seems Alabama, you went with us on that in what, February, I think it was that we went. And so this is the conveyor belt that goes with the potty machine. January, it was, it was January. And here we go. Let's get this open. Um, the lights are not on right quick. So this is the potty machine that we got from Mitchell Ellis. Like I said, it was, I just know it was cold. Every time we go somewhere, we bring the North Carolina weather with it, whether it's we bring the cold or we bring the heat. Um, but this potty machine, uh, Jerry really researched it and took his time finding the right one for us. But the great thing is, is that you'll notice on the front, there's a hitch, right? So we can hook it up. We found right now that the tractor works the best as far as moving it. And so you can hook it up to um, any three point hitch and you can move it around. It has got these great tires that will not go flat. Um, and so we can, you could like set it up outside in the field if you wanted to. So we will fill up these two houses with annuals first. When they are full, then we will take it out of here and then go put it into the new production area. But this potty machine, as far as potty machines go in you know, production in greenhouses, is an absolute game changer. And it is relatively small in comparison to the big boys, but it has made us work so much more efficiently and quickly. It has not replaced human labor. It just makes us work with, we can get it done hundreds and hundreds of plants planted in a day where it would take us a week to do that before. So when we are full on working, we did plenty of videos for you. I'll try to link one or two of them. Um, it takes a team of about eight people, eight to 10 people to really efficiently run this. Um, so we have, cause some people are like, well, you're just, you took away human jobs. No, no, we didn't. We, uh, you need more people on the line working it and then you're more efficient. You're in, you're out, you get it done in a day or two. And then we can go work in other areas to make uh, the rest of the greenhouse um, and the nursery great for you and ready for you to go. So this machine will do anything from the premium winter grande size all the way up to what a seven gallon seven. to a seven gallon so great great efficiency we're working smarter not harder so we will move that into production and then of course this annex building like i said is the home the center hub of all of the online uh, orders so if you have placed an order with us from creekside nursery gardening with creekside online then your packages have gone through this facility. Um, yeah, so 
the next things that are going to happen down here in production, let's go talk about that. As we make our way back down to uh, the new greenhouse, it's a really uh, fun sight. I don't know if you can, Jerry can get a shot of that. So, of course, these greenhouses, um, they're facing different ways. So what we're facing, the, the production, is the side of the greenhouse. Originally, that in our, in our plan was the new production greenhouse was going to be turned. And so the fronts of the greenhouses would face each other. Um, that is until um, our friend Jason, who does you know, all the grading, y'all saw that whole process with us, he came and they started measuring out and looking at the lay of the land and the grade of the land. And it made a whole lot more sense for us as far as grading the land to turn it this way. It's almost a perfect square, but it's not quite that 90 by 96. So it just made more sense to turn it this way so that we have the length is the most, um, that 96 feet as opposed to going deep because we would have had to really build up on the back side of that. So they will be facing side to front here, but this whole area right here will continue to stay gravel because we get 18 wheelers in here all the time. So we bring, um, when our annuals come in from uh, PBG, Pleasant View Gardens in New Hampshire, um, Lenny, hopefully we'll see Lenny this uh, January, February. He wheels it up here, that's massive, big old 18 wheeler. He whips it in here, backs it up, and we can unload. He could do it here. We could do it on the other greenhouses. Um, so there's a lot of accessibility in here that we have to have for trucks and deliveries. And nine times out of 10, they are the big old 18 wheelers and we can easily get them in here and maneuver around. The next thing that's going to happen, I believe, is they're going to continue. They're putting in all of the structures, so they're still on that third um, bay. We can go down there right quick and look at that and getting the rest of um, the purlins in. And uh, nobody wants that in their tire, a uh, rusty screw. That's not good. So when you see it, you stop because if you say, oh, I'll go back and pick it up, you're not going to find it again. Um, so they're going to continue to get all of the purlins, the ridge poles, um, all of the structures in because you can see that they're making their way down here. Um, they went and got a lift and so it just moves right there on the concrete back and forth. Highly, highly efficient. Uh, but then they'll start to build the, the end walls. So both sides and you can see that's what they're putting on uh, right now is some purlins and getting those on working as a team, getting it up there together. The height on this greenhouse, Jerry, do you remember how? how? 20 feet to the ridge. So 20 feet to the ridge. So from ground to ridge is 20 feet. And we want that because especially for us in North Carolina, the heat, right? The heat of the summer, you want that heat to rise and to be able to escape out. There will be a heater in both of these greenhouses. So we'll have, or all three. So we will have three heaters in here. There will be all sorts of circulation fans. There will be vents. There's all sorts of a lot of more uh, structures and things going on. But right now we're just getting the bones, right? The bones are going in and uh, moving quite efficiently. And it's looking great. It's looking great. Now, um, obviously the perfect way to see this structure would be um, with the drone. Um, but if you saw one of our last videos when Jerry was doing, a, it was like the the plants for the fall to add to your garden for fall color. Um, there was a little incident where the drone, because these drones are so smart, so when they get close to a structure, a warning beep will go off, like if it's a tree or, I don't know, a building or whatever. And so it's like a warning and it's like, so then Jerry can move it. Cause a lot of times he can't see the drone. He's just looking at the display screen. So <laughs> the warning alarm failed and uh, the drone just crashed into like probably the, literally the tallest poplar tree on the property. Like the thing was huge. By the grace of God, it fell, like it, it crashed and then fell down to the ground. It did not get caught in a limb. How that didn't happen, I don't know. So we were able to recover the drone and the footage, but the drone is done. And so we have ordered a new one. It will be here first of next week. So the next time we come up here, we will be sure to have um, <laughs> footage from the new drone. Uh, like Megan said, rest in peace uh, for that old drone. And, um, but yeah, so we'll give you a bird's eye view as soon as the new drone comes. But uh, the fall colors are really starting to pop here in North Carolina. The oaks are starting to change. We're going to get what 
28 next week. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna get like 28 degrees. So the colors really are gonna start to change then. But yeah, things are moving quite along quite nicely. It is Friday. This is when we're filming this on Friday. So Roger and the guys will go back to Georgia for the weekend and then come back next week. So they travel back and forth. So when they're here, they work well past dark. I mean, they are up here late at night working. So when they're here, they are all hands working long, long days. And then of course they go home to their families on the weekend and then come back up and see us and get the job finished. So as things will progress, we will keep you updated with some great new drone footage. And um, as always, thank you so much for your support of Creekside Nursery and all of our fun, crazy ventures and being with us as this business has absolutely grown is blooming and is thriving. It is all thanks to you. As always, we appreciate you. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.